we know why the right in this country is demonizing transgender people. They are doing it because this has been an effective electoral strategy for them for decades. And it was an elect, uh, effective electoral strategy for George W. Bush to make it about gay marriage in 2004. Republicans put, I think it was five or six state, constitution, uh, state constitutional amendments on the ballot in 2004 election as a way of driving the evangelicals out to vote for them. George Bush, in the run-up to the 2004 election, I believe it was, did a primetime address saying it's with a heavy heart that he's going to have to promote a constitutional amendment to the federal constitution, the U.S. Constitution, to, keep, to, to make marriage between a man and a woman. And when that all fell apart during the Obama administration, and I don't think people understand how quickly that flipped. I also don't think that people, uh, the Supreme Court um, in, um, uh, oh, what is it? The o Obergefell. O o Obergefell. I can never say yes, it right. Obergefell yeah. uh, decided that uh, marriage equality was law of the land. Suddenly people realized, like, after people, uh, men and men and women and women were getting married, that cats and dogs are not raining from the skies. <laughs> That it is not um, turning everybody gay. And um, it's just people being able to get married. The right needed something new. And they, and they saw tried it. it in the UK with this trans stuff. Well, it started almost like, you know, with like, you know, during the Obama administration with bathrooms. And, yes. and, wow. and, and so it's been growing. And the UK certainly has been immensely uh, successful. The turf movement there was a galvanizing uh, force yeah, for the right. And it, it got, you know, a let's, lot of let's be let's right. be careful when we say turf, because there are some people who I apparently uh, <laughs> take issue with the idea I that apologize. they're radical feminists. There is, before we get to that, that quadrant, let's just say with the, the, the full-on electoral agenda of the right wing is to demonize trans people and to understand that you have thousands of kids who are depressed, who are uh, committing suicide, who are experiencing suicidal ideation, who are living unfulfilled uh, lives, because of the stigma within society and that has been the norm and we have uh trans um people particularly trans women still was the same you know um uh, analogous to uh gay bashing 20 20 years ago being beaten and murdered because they're trans and then steps into the breach folks like Turfs, which is uh, trans exclusionary radical feminist. And, and my point is that they not step in. It was part of Murdoch owned papers and uh, and television stations pushing this in the way it's analogous to the way that CRT was being put. Well, but, but here's but, the difference, though, is that they're using because I don't think people understand what turfs is. It is a trans exclusionary radical feminist. And it is the idea that um, some and I, when I mean some, I mean few so-called radical feminists perceive the existence of trans people, and particularly trans women, as um, inhibiting the work of feminism. And that um, it is... It, 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 and They're not real women, and they don't understand the real female experience, and so they are a threat to women. And 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 it may be their 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 problems may be more sophisticated than that. And I think that like within you know corners of academia, <clears throat> people can debate these things because you know people debate things. And I think like you know the debate is, in my estimation, absurd. There are people who you call turfs, we call turfs. Who take issue with the fact that I'm not a radical feminist <laughs> or they uh, I'm not trans exclusionary. I think that they should have rights, but and it's the but that's operative. But the part that's really important is understand is that you cannot engage in this debate in a vacuum. You cannot be a public intellectual 
who who talks about very marginal, even by your own definitions, marginal issues to deal with trans people and not be aware of the context in which you're doing it. You cannot say, for instance, um, complain about the way that shutdowns are where during pandemic because the American public w was not aware that made aware of the argument that um, there has to be trade-offs, right? There have to be trade-offs. If you're going to shut everything down, we should know the price that we're paying. This concept of trade-offs. These are very same people who say that we should be aware of the trade-offs, who ignore the trade-offs of them complaining about a 12-year-old, 12-year-old trans girl competing in girls' basketball one a trans athlete in an entire state. They completely ignore the trade-offs of what that complaint does relative to the rest of society. Because here's the trade-off. When you go out there and you say, oh, we need to have integrity in, in all girls' sports. I mean, if you want to have a debate as to like, you know, the, you know, the WNBA wants to come up with some rules and there's some internal, you know, debate or, you know, uh, swimming or whatever the hell it is. That's one thing. But to sort of say, like, there's a problem with women's sports in high schools and colleges. And there is a problem with only with, uh, you know, rape in women's prisons, not by the guards who've been doing it, you know, and this has been going on for uh, de you know, forever. But these narrow instances are an affront to justice and fair play and whatnot, and we're going to blow it up. You're not aware of the trade-offs, because here are the trade-offs. You want to protect the kids? Is that what it is? You, you're worried about the detransitioning of a, a small percentage of, 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 of kids who, under the age of 18, with their parents' consent, with their doctor's consent, take puberty blockers. You're worried about them? Because you want, you're worried about this, this, this sliver, but with no consciousness of the, the price that's paid. Because here's the price. It's in Ohio. And it's not just in Ohio. It's going to be around the country. Ohio uh, House Republicans passed a bill late Tuesday. That was last week. No, excuse me. That was um, last week, I guess it was that bans all transgender students from playing high school and college sports and requires, you ready for this? Genital exams in any disputes. So let's be clear here. There is one, one trans athlete in Ohio that anybody can point to. And now, when there's disputes, in other words, hey man, I'm playing this team. Is she a girl? And, and if you don't think this happens on a regular basis, and particularly to girls of color, mm -hmm. Representative voted on House Bill 151 on the first day of Pride Month. This measure goes to the Senate after lawmakers return from their summer recess. If the bill becomes law, it would take precedence over all other current policies by high school and college sports associations. To be clear, the dispute goes like this. I'm Coach Stevens of uh, the junior high basketball, girls basketball team. And we're at, um, we're at you know, uh, Maple High School. And we're playing Elm High School. And that girl does not look like a girl to me. She looks like she's too strong or too tall. She needs to prove that she's a girl. You know what that requires? Literal examination of her sexual organs. That's what it, that's what these people their their promotion has led to now. The language the is kids they want to protect interior and exterior genital inspection. And this is part of what we've said when we played that state senator uh, interrogating that trans girl. I'm forgetting where that was, Tennessee. Uh, in Missouri. Missouri. Um, sh her sick fascination with that trans girl's genitalia. They have, uh, it's both a fear 
and a fascination that's embedded in, you know, religious fundamentalism and a titillation, frankly, that they receive from fixating on these kinds of things. We, we could play that clip from the Massachusetts, uh, what's her, uh, attorney general candidate? Um, is that on the sound sheet? No, yeah, well, we, it's but, but, but you, attorney we're general, it, we don't need to play it, but I just want to make sure clear. I know uh, attorney general candidate yes, who yes. S- said some comment about five year old boys, you know, uh, pre- uh, s- filleting, uh, other, filleting five-year-old. other five year old boys. They are demented. And well, uh, uh, that's where it uh, part of where it comes from. But let's also be clear here. This is this. This also <laughs> shows why. Uh, these attacks on trans kids, transgender people, is also a form of misogyny. Mm-hmm. Because where this leads to, let's be clear, our, um, our forcing of 12-year-old girls, 11-year-old girls, 15-year-old girls, 18-year-old girls, 19-year-old girls, 19-year-old women, they're going to have to, if they want to play this sport... They're all going to have to, at one point, if there's any type of dispute, they're going to have to have their vaginas examined, their breasts examined. And as you say, they're going to target black girls in particular. It's going to be a way to other them. Are you a little too masculine? This is an assault on women's sports. It's an assault on girls. I mean, it's like a step up from... uh, Frankly, it's abuse. The humiliation is the point. It's the point, too. They want those girls, especially if you're trans. It's a chilling effect. You should not participate in what a normal kid is going to do. And if you are a a girl that doesn't fit this definition, which is probably going to be targeted more towards uh, uh, girls of color, we're going to humiliate you, too, and subject you to something that is so traumatic. And it's going to happen. And they won't won't play sports. And and, and I can't wait. I can't wait for the um the one or two of these uh so-called uh, radical feminists who are trans exclusionary to go like oh i never knew it was going to go to here this is going to be like that sam harris moment where he realizes like oh wait why are my followers um all trump uh, people and one or two of them is going to do it i guarantee you at one point and maybe maybe yeah. six months after like four more states pass these laws but that's what's coming they're, they're, they're not stopping. This is a this is just a this is the first step. But um, and so this whole like, you know, this this whole quadrant of people who are out there now make and, and, be, and let's be clear, they're doing it to make money. Some of them may believe it because mm-hmm. they're twisted in their brains, but they're also doing it to make money because, you know, it's not like the, there is no bur- the house is not burning down when it comes down to like, you know, trans athletes and they're protecting the kids. Protect these kids. I want to uh, highlight this story, too. This is out of uh, Kiel, Wisconsin. Uh, This is a story that in May was uh, covered by Fox News, and the headline for Fox News was, Wisconsin middle schoolers accused of sexual harassment for using wrong gender pronouns. Fast forward to now, and Pink News has the story, school hit with terrifying bomb threats over probe into anti-trans bullying. I'll just read a little bit more. A Wisconsin school district has been bombarded with bomb threats over harassment complaint filed by a misgendered student. Four bomb threats have been sent to the Kiel area school district after it launched an investigation over a group of boys refusal to use another student's uh, they them pronouns again the, uh, one of the parents went on fox news in may about a week before these bomb threats of course uh, the threats of all reference the investigation currently taking place at keel middle school stating that the school district should drop the probe and issue a public apology students were first evacuated following the first threat on 25 may uh, with three subsequent threats forcing the school district to close for the summer and move all teaching online the threats have extended past the middle school and have affected the wider Kiel community with the perpetrators threatening grocery stores, malls, and streets. As a result, the city's Memorial Day march, which was meant to take place on 30 May, was canceled due to safety concerns. That's just because liberals love the lockdowns. Exactly. What about the importance of, uh, yeah, getting kids in school? I guess when they have the anti-trans bomb threats going on, we, don't, we stop covering that at Fox News. Well, you know, Jim Jordan uh, of Ohio, this is coming out of Ohio, he ha- knows a thing or two about child abuse, so maybe uh, yeah, they, right. they tapped into his expertise uh, on this bill. Absolutely nuts. Absolutely nuts. And, it, and of course it's going to lead to this. And it's going to be more horrific stuff like this, too.